Boys. Welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Um, the media has inflicted itself a mortal wound, and they've given it to themselves, and I don't think they're going to recover from this one. And uh, uh, the, It's very exciting. It's very exciting, and I love doing these stories because I hate the media probably as much, if not more, than politicians. Like, I hate them so much because they set the narrative for society in many ways. So if if all these papers come out and they start with the, you know, because there was one writer, there's one writer one day that started talking about toxic males and the patriarchy. There was one writer. Now, it might, it might have been in college. It, it might have been someone in college. It might have been, I don't know, New York Times, wherever. Somebody wrote that article. And it got a lot of clicks, and then all of a sudden, all the other fembots came out, and they're like, "Oh, re, this is a great story. I'm going to copy pasta this, and I'm going to I'm going to copy paste it and start talking about it." And all of a sudden, it's a national discussion, and then it's a focus on men, and then it's the educators talking about it, and we need to teach young women in schools about how all the bad men, and then there's commercials about the bad men, and then they change video games, and they're changing movies, and they're changing. They're changing how everything works, right? All because some artards in the newspapers decided, I'm going to write a story about this. And they're usually women and they're leftoids. They're woke leftoid women. So as I see mainstream media shrivel and, and slowly evaporate into the cow dung dust that it is, I can't help but talk about it and share the stories and – Maybe laugh and or commiserate with society with you guys. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that very quickly. Good news, uh, YouTube continues to demonetize my content because well they're YouTube. However, uh, locals we got a great group of guys over there, many many members, uh, quite a few supporters. I'd like more supporters, uh, but uh, my Rumble I have a representative over at Rumble, and he reached out to me and he said, hey, I heard you want to keep moving from. YouTube over to Rumble. We're going to help you do that. Maybe we'll help you find some sponsors or some people that want to support your work and help you, you know, make up the difference for YouTube screwing with you. I'm like, let's do it. Let's do it, man. So more of my content will be making its way to, to Rumble. And YouTube, you'll get the rated G version. And Rumble will get the rated R version, as will my locals channel. And that's just the way it is. So you'll still get the stories. You'll just have to get them chopped up or you won't get the full, the full version that the other places do because YouTube. So uh, one of the things that kicked me off on this anger train was this Salon article that was just published, uh, I think, yesterday. And I saw this and I got really angry at first. But then I got okay with it, and I'll tell you why. So this is from Salon, another woke female-led trash site. And and men, criminals, and the bad, you know, I, I think six women came forward and were talking about this, but they say they were getting punched in the face by random dudes in New York City. You know, New York City, the conservative MAGA haven that is New York City. And uh, they're criminals. But Salon decided to say men punching random women in New York City, a desperate last gasp of the male rage-fueling MAGA. So they got to come out and speak bad about conservatives, and they have to speak bad about men in general. They don't say, oh, this is some criminals. Obviously, not all men are like this. This is just bad behavior on some of the Perhaps uh, the the negative people in New York City are criminals or what? No, they go for men in general. And I'm like, you know what? That makes me really furious. But if you look down at the bottom, this was posted on Twitter. This has been viewed 1.7 million times. You can see that kind of right right down here in the lower right. This has been, it doesn't mean 1.7 million people read the article. It just means 1.7 million people have scrolled past this on Twitter. Out of that, 189 people liked the post. 920 quote tweeted it, making fun of it, and another 4,100 left comments. And I can tell you right now, the comments on there were 
eat crap and basically expire yourself. <laughs> like, I hope you don't make it much longer. Because, um, so that's basically 5,000 people to 189, 5,000 finding this to be absolute dog drivel. And then I kind of felt like, you know what, I'm okay with this because this is really showing you how people feel about these trash websites. And then I realized something else. Salon, Variety, they're going to go the way of many other, you know, the, all the other trash sites like Vice and everything else and the BuzzFeeds. They're going to go the same direction. But what I didn't expect to think is so is CNN. So is NPR, National uh, Program. NPR is that National Program Radio. I forget what it stands for. That's going away. That's getting trashed. And now you've got people, and I, and the usual suspects that I always talk about, you know, Jimmy Dore and Russell Brand and Joe Rogan and, and, uh, and other people on, you know, just on YouTube or whatever, they're getting the views instead. And the media is lashing out because I've been seeing a lot of stories about the media, like mainstream media, calling out YouTubers and saying YouTubers are, are, are spreading disinfo or YouTubers are not telling the truth or these ultra right-wing conservative Russell brand. And you're like, really, dude? It's because they realize that they're slowly being choked out by the independent creators. And that makes me very happy. Here's the actual story. Uh, men punching random women in New York City, a desperate last gasp of the male rage fueling MAGA. Random New York City attacks are uh, an extreme manifestation of men feeling entitled to women's time and attention. Says who? So now this is written by an, uh, Amanda Marcotte, senior writer, senior writer, guys. And she takes like criminals randomly or maybe not so randomly punching women in the head in New York City. And she turns that into manifestation of men feeling entitled to women's time and attention. Just men, not the men of New York, not criminal elements, just men in general. Now, of course, the other thing she's written is she's basically a senior politics writer at Salon and the author of Troll Nation, How the Right Became Trump Worshipping Monsters Set on Rat Effing Liberals, America and Truth Itself. Oh, boy, doesn't that sound like a feminist rant and rag, doesn't it? And, of course, everything down through here is it's against men. It's against conservatives. It's against family. It's against Christians. It's, you know, it's, it's against all the normal, all the normal things that, you know, America basically was built and, and created upon. So she's a, she's a leftoid, I don't know, commie, feminist, whatever. I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but I want, I want to give you an idea of why these women can't help but delete themselves. I mean, not literally, but delete themselves from being relevant, delete themselves from being listened to, and they're killing the industry that they're actually in. They're destroying their own industry. She says men are punching men, just men, men, men in general. Uh, men are punching random women on the streets of New York City. As usual, with these kinds of diffuse and chaotic stories, there's much that is unknown, including how often this is happening, how many people are involved, or whether it's all coordinated. But what we do know is already alarming. CNN reports that dozens of women have discussed being having this done to them on social media and formally interviewed six of them. NBC News reports there have been at least three arrests. Uh, CBS News reports the NYPD released images last week of a fourth man wanted for allegedly uh, punching a woman in Union Square. Even reality TV star Beth uh, Bethany Frankel says that she, this happened to her. Women report it being assaulted by men on different races and ages. Still across the different stories, a couple of similarities pop out. The alleged, uh, the, these alleged women uh, that are being harmed are mostly young and pretty. And most of them say they were minding their own business when they were attacked. Some were on their phones or reading tablets. Others were speaking to friends or daydreaming. Whatever they were doing, they're just living their lives. And that, it seems, is what it enraged their assailants. She, notice she says seemingly. It seemingly enraged their assailants. Okay, maybe. We don't know. 
Whatever the scale of problem eventually turns out to be, it's not surprising these stories have gone viral and captured the public's imagination. Yes, of course they've gone viral, and what's to say that they're not being copycatted or duplicated because they're going viral and they're getting these women uh, interviews and clicks and attention? I talked about this in another video. Who's to say? They say, well, it rarely turns into to, um, action, harm, harmful action. Most women who spend much time walking around in public have experience with men who berate them for paying attention to something other than the man who is now often out of nowhere spewing invectives. In our modern era, the, that often manifests with men who are infuriated at women for looking at their phones, but I'm old enough to remember when it would get, I would get yelled at for reading books in public. And just like that, we're off of the criminals, we're off of the women getting punched in the head, we're off of New York City crime, and we're on to... Men. Men bad. Now, do they have any proof that it's MAGA-wielding bad men? And Well, it's because men are doing it, and polls show that while young men might back Trump in larger numbers. So if since, since men overwhelmingly or more support Trump, and it's men that are punching people in the head, therefore— it's Trump men punching people in the head. That is, that is what's happening. That is what's happening with our media today. And it's infuriating. But the, the good news is all we have to do is sit and watch these women self-inflict themselves right out of work. Uh, same thing with this one. And now this one, I, I, can't, I can't get into the full video and story of this, although I do think I have it. Let me see. Yes, I do have it. I'm, you know what? I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this. We're going to talk about this over on Rumble and Locals. I can't talk about it on YouTube because F YouTube, but I can share this portion of it. Uh, police fire 96 shots in 41 seconds, ending a black gentleman during a traffic stop. And this is by Jennifer Hassan. Uh, the problem Jennifer Hassan forgets to mention is that the gentleman in question was asked to get out of his car and to not roll up his windows because uh, they were extremely dark tinted. And then he opened fire on the police first. And it was a police woman who was a female cop. Uh, he opened and uh, fire on her and she had to go running for her life. They forgot to mention that happened first. But because they want the clickbait titles, because they want to do the social justice aspect, they're trying to turn this into another St. Floyd, I think. It's not working. They're trying to, and they're failing. They can't help it. They can't help but try to, instead of giving you the information and letting you figure out how you feel about it, she's woman-splaining. And that's the irony of this, is that these women do not feel the ability to tell you what happened and let you figure out. These women have to turn into Karens and tell you how to feel about it. And this once happened to me. I, was, I, went, I had to run into a store to get something very quickly. It was a, probably an 80-degree day out, but it was overcast. So it wasn't like, you know, sun beaming down. It was a, a warm summer day, but it was overcast. And I had Walker here with me, my dog. And I had to run in and grab something. It was going to be five, maybe 10 minutes on the max. So shut off the vehicle, rolled down the windows enough where he could easily stick his head out, but he couldn't quite jump out. So he had all four windows down quite a bit. And like I said, sun not beaming down, went into the store, came out five or eight minutes. Uh, he was sitting there in the back of the vehicle, wagging his tail. And I open up the, you know, the rear gate and I'm, I'm putting my stuff in the SUV. And this woman comes up behind me. And she said, excuse me. Excuse me. You know, animals like that wear fur coats. And you putting him inside a vehicle on an extremely hot day. Like, extremely hot? It's 80. Like, lady, I've got a long sleeve shirt on. And the sun's not beaming down. Well, he's, and, and she just decides she needs to run me up and down the flag post. Now, needless to say, I had some choice words for her, too. Of course, she had, I don't know, green or blue hair or something or other. But one of those. And... She didn't know anything about how long I was in the store, that he's that his breed has an extremely thick, uh, thin, extremely thin coat to where he's cold at 70 degrees or below. That doesn't matter. She had to tell me how I'm wrong and my thinking's wrong. She had to butt in. 
And those same women are the ones writing these stories. Those same women are the ones telling you that you're wrong and that you're evil and that you're all the things. And because they're in positions of power, either as CEOs or marketing managers or article writers or senior editors or like this other lady was, they need to say, you know what, I feel a certain way about this. So instead of just telling people the information, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let everybody know why they need to feel the way I feel and why they're monsters and wrong if they don't. And because of that, they're destroying everything. Budweiser destroying themselves. Planet Fitness, Disney, uh, BuzzFeed, Vice, all these articles, TV, uh, uh, TV series that are going like on Amazon and Netflix, TV shows, movies, you know, with the Disney and the Marvels, and they're ruining everything, and they can't help it. They would rather sit on their high horse and they'd rather scream at everybody from their ivory towers as they burn down the literal corporations that pay them and hire them they would rather stay on their high horse all the way until everything's burnt down around them. And then what, the, what they'll do is they'll blame the management, the CEOs. Uh, and this is what happened with uh, Vice, a couple of the women that were leaving Vice. Uh, uh, what was the other one? Uh, was it Jalopnik or, or Jezebel or oh, Deadspin? It was Deadspin. They're all the same. Deadspin's supposed to be writing about sports. And when the managers and the senior editors and the CEO and whoever else told the writers, listen, you ladies, you dingbats, start writing about sports and cut it out with the politics. The women are like, I feel I must talk about these things because they're more important than sports. We need to talk about the race issues and then, 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 then. And, and eventually, Deadspin gets shut down. And what did the women do on the way out? We won. Yeah, I'm out of a job, but we did the right thing against these evil owners. And is anybody hiring? Perhaps I'll go back to doing the saucy work that I was doing before. They're, they're self-inflicted mortal wounds. And, they're, and, and, and the ironic thing is they walk out with their heads held high like they've done something amazing and good, that they're doing the right thing. And so ultimately, they can't help themselves. They just, they burn it all to the ground. Uh, I'm going to save these two stories because I want to talk about this traffic stop. Uh, same thing. Now, this is another Selena uh, Kuznikov. And guys, these stories are all coming out as, within the last two or three days. As you know, there's a new movie coming out, Civil War. And the director and Alex Garland warns, warns just everybody. See, Back in the day, Hollywood actors and actresses didn't have access to, to social media. And so, like, when you thought about, I don't know, an actor, like, maybe you really liked, uh, I'm trying to think of somebody, uh, like Sylvester Stallone. You'd be like, as a kid, you're like, oh, Sylvester Stallone's cool, or Bruce Willis, or, you know, whatever action star you happen to like, or even before then. You know, Hollywood stars were recluse. You didn't know anything about them. You just saw them in a movie. Uh, they, you did a really good job. You liked this actor. You want to know more about them. And that's what made them interesting. And then you'd see them on an award show, tell a joke, and you're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know Arnold Schwarzenegger was funny. Like, whatever, right? But now they can't help but scream and tell you how to live and how you need to shut up and take the jab and how you need to live your life in accordance with them, even though they are literally have, in many cases, hundreds of millions of dollars, and you, making 17 or 18 bucks an hour, need to think and feel about the world the exact same way as them. So they can't help it. Well, anyway, the Civil War director, Alex Gardens, uh, Garland, warns mistrust of journalists makes life dangerous for everybody. So if you don't listen to the leftist media and what they're telling you, and if you don't listen to what the Hollywood people are telling you, well, you're, you, this is dangerous. This is dangerous, guys. It's the same thing that Seth MacFarlane and uh, uh, Bill Maher come out, you know, and they come out and they say, oh, I don't know. I don't understand why people aren't. I mean, sure, journalists occasionally make mistakes, but they fact check things. It's not like they just go around lying. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. We're going to talk about that too. Um, 
The Independent has a, an interesting article here, um, and it's called uh, The Ideological Divide Between Men and Women is Growing. What's Happening? I can tell you what's happening. I, I'm, I'm going to break this down, and I'll keep this short for you guys on YouTube. Uh, for Rumble and Locals, we'll dive in a little bit deeper. What's happening is that uh, women are lying, and women are in the media, and they're simply lying. And people that read the news know that they're lying, and they know they've taken a political side, and they're not into that. They're not, there's many people, myself included, that say, I'm smart enough, you just tell me what's going on, and then I'll feel a certain way about it. And you know what? It may not be the same as what everybody else feels. I might not even feel, I might, I might be on the wrong side of it. I might be on the wrong side of history. Don't care. I, I, I base my opinions on my background and my values. You can't give that to everybody else. And, it, and, it's, and it's driving a wedge between men and women because men, believe it or not, men, the pigs, you know, the insensitive ones, the, the men that just use women and hate society and are selfish, you know, those men. Those men overwhelmingly are voting more conservative, more family-based, uh, more having values, getting women off the, the only fool's sites and getting them back maybe even in the kitchen or, or back at least behaving. That's men. And the women are like big children. No, we want to do what we want. And if it hurts us or destroys our future, we don't care. We're selfish. That's really what it boils down to. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more in a, in a moment as well. But the main story I want to get to is actually about NPR. The NPR editor uh, says network turned a blind eye to the Hunter Biden laptop story because it could help Trump. Not that it wasn't fake news. Not that it was disinfo. It's they knew they were like, yeah, this this could hurt. This could hurt Biden getting elected, and it could help Trump. We can't have that. We can't have that. So squash the story. Um, I'll talk about that here shortly. Uh, here's another from NPR. A senior editor comes out today. NPR employs 87 Democrats in editorial positions, zero Republicans in the D.C. newsroom. You're ideologically captured. Now look, if this said. If this said NPR employs 87 Republicans and zero Democrats, I'd say, oh, that's bad. That's bad. If Fox News, they come out and say Fox News doesn't, you know, it's all conservative, which I don't think it is. But if they said it and they said there's zero Democrats, that's not good because it's pushing everybody to these ideological camps. Like everybody's getting pushed on the, on the, on the outsides. And if you know anything about centrifugal and sub, sub centrifugal force and some centripetal force is that when the weight is in the center, that's usually a good thing as, as things are spinning around and as rotation and, and as things happen every, when things are close to that center of gravity and things are everything in a nice tight ball, things are going along pretty well. You can't do, you can't get too crazy, right? But if you, if you think of that, about that stretching to where instead of being a, a nice little ball spinning like a globe, those two sides start stretching out. And before you know it, it's two massive weights on the end of a barbell, all right, like you're at the gym. Now imagine that barbell spinning around at, you know, 100 miles an hour versus a, a ball spinning around at 100 miles an hour. That, that ball is still dangerous, but nowhere near as dangerous as two huge weights way out on these extremes. And that's what's happening now. And there's going to be a breaking point. And unfortunately, I think the left is going to break itself and then it's going to go crazy coming after the right. We can see this already happening with authoritarianism and trying to shut down free speech and, well, that's hate speech and, well, you can't really say that because it hurts people's feelings and you must, you must respect me and you must listen to me and you must let me do all the things and we need to teach the next generation these weird things and this is what's happening. And so far, I think people have been relatively nice. But there's a point where that weight is going to get too heavy and they're not going to be so nice anymore and things are going to start falling apart. Well, from the uh, 
this is from, uh, let's see, uh, from, oh, For the Free People. This is an article, and this gentleman here is, he's been an, an editor and a senior business editor, basically, at NPR for 25 years. And he's even admitting now, here's how we lost America's trust. You know, the, the granted, there's a lot of government funding for NPR, but a lot of it's donations. And the donations are drying up. And, the, and of course, Biden is, and many of the Democrats are saying, oh, we need to give them more money. And the Republicans are like, why are we going to give money to, to basically media that's like Pravda, that it's only one side? But when did this start? When did this start? It started with Trump derangement. And it started with women wanting to push their causes. And these men, and he even admits it because he's, he's very much a leftist. He's like, we went along with it. And the women now, there's no stopping them. There is no, well, okay, we'll just put out the news. It's no, damn it. You need to listen and you need to listen to how I feel about things because they're strong and stunning and empowered women. And they're inflicting a, a mortal wound in all news agencies, in TV, in movies, in, in everything. They can't help, they can't help themselves. Uh, Yuri uh, Berl Berliner, a veteran at the public radio institution, says the network lost its way when they started telling listeners how to think. And this is an article from yesterday. And why do they start telling people how to think? Because they, they, you, you're not allowed to do something they don't like. They're entitled elitists, and you must do what they tell you to do because they're better than you because they've been to college and they eat soy where you eat beef, you horrible meat-eating non-vegans, you. <laughs> he says, you know the stereotype of the NPR listener? It's an EV-driving, wordle-playing, tote-bag-carrying coastal elite. It doesn't precisely describe me, but it's not far off. I'm a Sarah, Loyant, uh, I'm a Sarah Lawrence educated was raised by a lesbian peace activist mother. I drive a Subaru and Spotify says my listening habits are most similar to people in Berkeley University. I fit the NPR mold. I'll cop to that. Well, that sounds like a very effeminate, weak man. So when I got a job here 25 years ago, I never looked back. As a senior editor on the business desk where news is always breaking, we covered upheavals in the workplace, supermarket prices, social media, and artificial intelligence. It's true NPR has always had a liberal bent, but during most of my tenure here, uh, during most of my tenure here, an open-minded, curious culture prevailed. We were nerdy, but not knee-jerk activist or scolding. In recent years, however, that has changed. Today, those who listen to NPR or read its coverage online find something different, the distilled worldview of a very small segment of the U.S. Pop, uh, population. If you are conservative, you will read this and say, duh, it's always been this way. What's interesting is ask yourself, because there's always been, I mean, since the 60s, right? You had the crazy hippies, like there were crazy hippies. And they were in, they were in acting and they were in media and, and they were on TV and they've always been around. They're making music. I mean, just look at Yoko and John uh, Lennon, Yoko Ono and John Lennon and, and some of the Beatles and give, give peace a chance. And they've always been out there. But when did they infiltrate the news and the media to the point where they're destroying themselves and losing money and going crazy over all this stuff? It's when the women got in charge. It's when you got female producers and female executives and female CFOs and CEOs and female marketing managers and female PR firms and females writing these articles. They got to be in charge because in the past, a woman would take something and a man more than likely would read it, say, nah, it's a little too lopsided. Let's fix this. Let's fix this. We got to come at this from a neutral angle or nobody's going to read it. And he might have been talking some sense. But then when it's, a, when it's a woman in charge and she says, oh, I like this. Let's highlight. Let's highlight how this is bad and this is bad. And they can't help it. They're like tall children. They're opinionated tall children. Now, these guys that are doing this work, yes, they're just as bad. But something set them off crazy. 
And I and as he mentions, I think a big part of it is TDS, Trump derangement syndrome. They thought the 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 powers that be thought they had they had the 2016 election in the bag. They thought it was in. It's done. It's good to go. And Trump was a, a, a fly in the ointment. He was a wrench in the machine. And they, they freaked out because they're like, we never saw this coming. And I think at that point in time, they said, you know what? A lot of people must not know about who this guy is. And we've got to tell them who he is. And then we need to beat them about the, the neck and face. And then we need to hit them with sledgehammers. And then we need to drop Buicks on them. We need to keep throwing more and more because they're not listening to us not realizing that at a certain point you've lost your target audience, which is people that are sane. I'll keep reading on, but I think you'll agree with me. Um, and and, and the, let, me, let me wrap it up with this. And what's interesting is the problem that is a political one, i.e. Republican versus Democrat or, you know, left versus right or authoritarian versus freedom, these are, have all gotten exacerbated in the last few years. And while it is centered around politics, people are getting to the point now where you look at college, which, again, it gets around politics. And then you look at uh, social media, which is politics, and movies, which is politics, and blah, 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 blah. And it always boils back to politics. And it's to the point now where the left is like, you must shut up. You can't talk anymore because you keep exposing our lies and – I'm not saying the right is any better, mind you, but the left, they, when they get called out on their lies, uh, they try to shut you up, especially when they're in power. And that's what they're doing now. And so really, when, instead of left being versus right, I see this very much as free versus authoritarianism. It's who's going to let you be free and who's going to tell you what to do, how to live, eat the bugs, uh, don't eat the meat, uh, no more dairy, dairy's bad for you, uh, you know, Stop touching gasoline cars and buy it, buy an eighty thousand uh, dollar like EV and solar panels and and all the th all the things, and that if if you don't if you don't vote a certain way you're you know all the isms and phobes, that's what's happened. But what it, it happened around politics, it happened around Hillary Clinton not winning, and a lot of women being very upset about it. And I think those women decided to. to to push their narratives into the media and all things to drive their politics down everyone's throat because they're so upset that they lost. I really do feel like that. So as much as this really isn't about politics, it also is. Everything's about politics right now. Everything. You know, the, the food labels on your food, they just the, – the, the – the current administration came out and said that they don't need to label if bug products like bug protein and other things like that, that f food companies don't have to label if there's uh, insect protein in, in, the, in the food. The current administration, the Democrats said, yeah, w w that's fine. We, they don't have to let people know. Okay, so you're going to poison me and not tell me? And that's where we are. It's free versus not free. So for anybody that gets angry at me because I happen to speak ill of the current left, it's because a lot of the left wants to take away my freedoms. And, and I don't want that to happen. They say, uh, for decades since its founding in 1970, a wide swath of America t uh, tuned in to NPR for reliable journalism and gorgeous audio pieces with birds singing in the Amazon. Millions came to us for conversations that exposed us to voices around the country and the world radically different from our own, engaging precisely because they were unguarded and unpredictable. No image generated more pride within NPR than the farmer listening to Morning Edition from his or her tractor at sunrise. Um, I will say this much. I used to listen to NPR because I drove a lot, and I, this is long before they had, well, maybe not long before, but this is maybe when they had tape cassettes in your car, and I had a broken tape cassette in a car for many years. So the only thing I could listen to is, is the radio. And I remember listening to NPR and I listened to, um, uh, uh, oh gosh, what's a, the conservative radio host that just passed away from, I think he had cancer. Why can't I, his, his name just right out of my head. Anyway, uh, I used to listen to both quote unquote left and right leaning. And, uh, um, 
and after a while, I found I really couldn't listen to the, to the NPR anymore because it just – Rush Limbaugh, that's his name, the conservative radio host, Rush Limbaugh. Um, I just – I found I couldn't listen to NPR anymore because they were insulting and they started getting really weird. Now if you listen to them, they're just insane. They're just, they've just lost the plot. Uh, they say back in 2011, although NPR's audience tilted a bit to the left, it still bore resemblance to America at large. 26% of listeners describe themselves as conservative, 23 is middle of the road, and 37% 37% is liberal. See, and I think that's a little high on the liberal end. I mean, that's not quite America, um, but it's a little high. But it, yes, slightly tilt to the left. By 2023, the picture was completely different. Only 11% described themselves as very or somewhat conservative. And if they're if if they're they're probably not even truly conservative, ironically. 21% is middle of the road, and 67% of listeners said they were very or somewhat liberal. We weren't just losing conservatives. We're also losing moderates and traditional liberals. An open-minded spirit no longer existed within NPR. Um, they go down through and they talk a little bit about some of the reasons why. The, the miss, the miss uh, like the Russia Gate hoax, uh, that was that was false. I mean, this is what he's saying in the article: uh, the jabs being inaccurate, where the you know where the bug came from, and and he concludes this basically with, you know, um, we we stopped we stopped listening and we started telling. We 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 stopped giving people information and we started preaching. And the only thing that I can think of. Is that they got the they got the DEI they got the the women involved they got the they got the the people that are pushing narratives and they got them involved um, because he even says here uh, after the after the Saint Floyd thing he says the message from the top was very different America's infestation with systemic isms was declared loud and clear, and it was given. Our mission was to change it. So they're saying, hey, you know what? We've got systemic isms in all the institutions. You need to let everybody know. You need to tell them about it. Well, who started that crap? Women. They, the feminism that bled over into intersectional feminism, which bled over into DEI, which bleeds over into everything else. It was feminism that started it, and it got all the way to the top, and then, then from the top down, it's, it comes rolling back downhill. Um, he said, uh, when it comes to identifying and ending these things uh, in a company-wide article, uh, he said, we can be agents of change. Listening and deep reflection are necessary, but not enough. They must be followed by constructive and meaningful step forwards. I'll hold myself accountable for this. And he said, and we were told that NPR itself was part of the problem. In, in a confessional language, he said, the leaders of public media, started with me, must be aware of how we ourselves have benefited from white privilege and our careers. We must understand the unconscious bias we bring to our work and interactions. We must commit ourselves, body and soul, to profound lang- or changes in our own selves and our institutions. He declared that diversity on our staff and our audience was the overriding mission, the North Star of the organization. Phrases like that, part of the North Star, became part of meetings and more casual conversations. And, and he said we're given unconscious bias training and the DEI and, and all this stuff. And, and this actually has to do with, wait for it, SAG-AFTRA. So if you don't know what SAG-AFTRA is, it's the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. So the people at NPR are part of SAG-AFTRA. Well, SAG-AFTRA, it's a labor union that represents film, television, digital media. It ensures that actors, announcers, voiceover artists, dancers, and other performers are treated fair by their employees with approximately 160,000 members. And guess what? The DEI and the feminism and the intersectional feminism and all the things bled into that. And then they bled out into the media. They bled out into the news. They bled out into the radio. And they're into everything now. And what started all this? Feminism. And then it went to intersectional feminism. 
and then DEI. He goes down farther, but you guys get the idea. I'm, I'm not going to plow through the rest of this. For, for you guys on YouTube, I'll leave it here. This isn't a self-inflicted mortal wound. They're bleeding out. It, and it's, there is no stopping it. There's no stopping the hemorrhage because these women, are the, they're the thorns. These women in these positions of power, these women in the unions, these women in the human resources and the DEI, they're doing the bloodletting. They're the thousands, thousands, and thousands of tiny little thorns that are coating the inside of these organizations, almost like wearing, almost like wearing like yoga pants that are covered on the inside of them with thorns. And as you move and you go about your day, those little thorns just scratch the surface, but it's the full surface. And before you know it, you're losing pints and pints of blood. You're losing all of that. You're, you're, you're tapping out. The lights are going to, everything's getting dizzy. You, you, things are spinning, getting a little lightheaded. It's because it's, it's fatal. And, and even if you get rid of a, a couple of those thorns or a hundred of those thorns or a thousand of those thorns or 10,000 thorns, just in SAG-AFTRA, there's 160,000. And then what happens when you get the people that, you know, aren't in SAG-AFTRA, but they're the book writers and they're the people that are uh, doing, I don't know, uh, marketing for some of these firms. And it's too late. It's too late for them. They're, 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 the, they're the walking zombie. Like they're already, they've already, they've already croaked, but they don't know it yet. And I think it's terminal. I think there's no coming back from this. And, and the funny thing is, even if these women and these weirdos and these lefties, and even if they're told, if you keep going, you're going to destroy it. They'll say, I don't care. The cause is bigger than me. And then they destroy it. The, the sad part is they're going to take down a lot of society with it as well. Guys, if you're here on, on YouTube, make sure to jump over to Rumble, jump over to my locals. The links are down below. That's where we're going to continue on the conversation. Uh, and so, because screw YouTube, because they don't, they're not, they're not fun to play with anymore. Mm -hmm.